Chapter 1 Wednesday, the 20th of March, 1940, 1.00 p.m. It was just another Los Angeles party, Nick wrote in his notebook. Beautiful women, loud music. But then, at the end of the party, a girl with a knife in her back. He looked around the room. Some policemen and detectives were taking photographs. Move on, one of the policemen said to Nick. But I'm taking notes for a story, said Nick. Be quick about it then, said the policeman, and then get out. Nick was a journalist in Los Angeles. He always wrote about the dark side of life in the city. There were a lot of actors and actresses trying to find work in Hollywood. Tinseltown, the city of dreams just up the road. Was this girl with the knife in her back one of these out-of-work movie people? Nick went towards the girl's dead body. Don't touch anything, mister, said the policeman. I just want to look at her, said Nick. She was blonde, tall, very pretty. Nick liked tall, blonde, pretty girls, but not one with a knife in her back. That was ugly, violent, horrible. There were so many murders in this city. And no justice, Nick thought. The police never found the killers in most murder cases. Will they find this one? He asked himself. Who was she? Nick turned to the detective. How do I know? The detective answered. Just a girl. She went to a lot of parties. She knew a lot of men. It's the same old story with a lot of girls in the big bad city of L.A. The detective smiled. There was nothing to smile about, Nick thought. He looked at the girl again. There was something familiar about her. Did he know her? He looked at her more closely. Then he saw the terrible scars on her wrist. His heart stopped for a moment. Can she be? No, it's not possible. He looked at the other arm, the same scars on the wrist. Oh my God, he said. He felt sick. Hey, these scars will help to tell us who she was, the detective said. I think I know who she was. Do you? Who was she then? asked the detective. Her name was Anne Hammond. Do you think this place is hers? It looks too good for a girl like her. She was just a good-time girl. Do you think one of her men friends kept her here? She was not a good-time girl, Nick said. He wanted to defend her now she was dead. Killed about ten hours ago, another of the detectives said after looking at the body carefully. At about three in the morning. What a party. Nick wanted to know who else was at the party. But first he wanted to touch Anne again for the last time. He touched her long, blonde hair. It wasn't blonde when we were together, he remembered. The blonde hair came away in his hand. It was not real. It was a wig. Under the wig, Nick saw the Anne he knew. Suddenly she looked very lost, but very beautiful. At that moment, Nick knew what to do. I will find her killer, he said. Forget her, said the first detective. She's just another nobody, no good to anyone. But Nick had a sense of justice and had reasons of his own for wanting to find Anne's killer. You can forget her if you want, he said to the detective. But I'm going to find her killer. Chapter 2, Wednesday, 3.30 p.m. How do you know this, Anne Hammond? Nick did not reply. A good journalist doesn't tell everything, not even to the editor of the newspaper, and Nick's editor was angry. How do you know her? The editor repeated. If you don't tell me, I'll take you off the story. No, boss, said Nick. I'm the man for the job. I know the situation and I knew the victim so I'll be able to make a good story out of it. Give me a couple of days. And you don't want to tell me anything before then? That's right. Two days, that's all, 
said Nick. The editor was still angry. But he knew Nick was a good journalist, and a good story is important for the newspaper. He waited, thinking. After a while, the editor spoke. Okay, you win. Thanks, boss, said Nick. Two days. No more, the editor said. Friday. No problem, said Nick. As he left, he heard the editor's phone ringing. Five minutes later, the editor called him back to the office. Problem over. The police arrested the killer half an hour ago. Who was it? A waiter. He was at the party. He killed her for money. Something like that. I don't believe that, Nick said. She... Forget it, the editor said, almost angry again. There's no story. It's over. Why was the editor so angry? He's scared, Nick thought. Someone has told him to take me off this story, someone important. But who? But Nick only said, okay, boss. If you say so, it's over. No story. And he left the editor's office. He knew the waiter was not the killer. There was a big story here. And he wanted to find that story, to find the real killer. For Anne, for her memory. Nick was certain that the waiter was in jail for something he did not do. Nick wanted justice for Anne, and now for the waiter, too. He went to see the waiter's lawyer. The lawyer had an office in a dirty part of town. He wore dark glasses all the time, even in his office at half past five. He smoked all the time, too. His name was J.T. Morgan. Nick didn't like him. I want to help your waiter. I know he's innocent. Tell me his side of the story, Mr. Morgan. Call me JT, said the lawyer. The man in jail is Johnny Wong. He works in a Chinese restaurant in the same apartment block where the woman died. Why was he in the apartment? Nick asked. They called for food for the party. He took it up to them, the lawyer said. Three complete meals. Only three? That's important, said Nick. You never know. Maybe not everyone was hungry, said JT. Did Johnny Wong see all the people there? Nick asked. He saw six or seven women, he said. Women who maybe go to a lot of parties like that. How many men? Nick asked. Four, said the lawyer. A fat man, a thin man, an old man, and a very good-looking man, an actor. Nick was suddenly more interested. Who was the actor? Blade Reigns. You've seen him in movies, small parts. He's no big star. But he thinks he is. Well, that's a help. I'll start with him. Thanks, Mr. Morgan, said Nick, and started to leave. JT, said JT. As Nick left, the lawyer asked him, Why are you helping my client? What's in it for you? I'm not helping Johnny Wong, Nick replied. I'm doing this for Anne Hammond. Don't ask why, that's another story. Chapter 3 Flashback March 1934, six years ago, another story. Six years ago, another world. Nick went slowly up the stairs to the fourth floor. No lift, bad smells on the stairs. It was that kind of apartment block. He found number 409, but there was no one there. The old lady died last week. She left a dog. It cried for a week. This was the story. Not much of a story, Nick said to the editor. You're young. You do any story I tell you to do said the editor. So Nick went next door to number 408 to get a story about the old lady's dog. But it was a young lady who opened the door. The kind of girl Nick liked. Tall, very pretty with short dark hair. Who are you? What do you want? She asked nervously. I want to put your name in the papers, said Nick. Are you kidding? 
Tell me about the old lady next door and her dog. That way your name will be in the papers, he told her. They went to a bar and had coffee and talked. She told him all about the dog and the old lady. Not much of a story. Thanks a lot, Nick said and stood up. Is that it? She asked. Is that all? That's all, he said. But you don't know my name. How will I be in the paper if you don't know my name? Nick smiled. She wasn't stupid, this girl. Pretty, too. What are you doing tonight? He asked. Me? Oh, nothing, she replied. You want to come for a drink with me? It wasn't a question, really. Oh, said the girl. Okay. See you later then, miss. Hammond, she said. Anne Hammond. Chapter 4 Wednesday, 11.55 p.m. It was easy to find a photo of Blade Rains. That kind of actor is always in the papers. At the first night of a movie, at a club, in a restaurant. Nick was in the office. There weren't many people there. Just the printers with the morning edition of the paper. And a few journalists like Nick, working on their stories. Nick found a good photo of Blade taken at Christmas, just three months ago. Blade reigns, the young star, at a Christmas party at Lola's nightclub. Young, thought Nick. If he's young, I'm a baby. He's 40 at least. There was another man in the photo with Blade reigns. He was fat and oily. He looked dangerous, like a gangster. What's the young star doing with a man like that? Thought Nick. He took the picture from the paper. Midnight, he said to himself. That's the best time to go to a club like Lola's. An hour later, Nick was talking to Lola, the owner of the club. She was elegant, sexy, and her cigarette was in a long black holder. Yes, I know Blade Reigns, she said. I know lots of people. They were in her office at the club. On the wall of the club, there was a large mirror. But in the office, this mirror was a window to see into the club. People were dancing, drinking, smoking, having a good time. In the office, it was quiet. Lola was looking at Nick. What do you want from me? She asked. He showed her two photos. One was of Anne in the summer of 1934. The other was of Blade Rains and the fat man. Lola looked at the first one. She did not speak. This woman died last night, Nick said. He watched Lola's face carefully. It didn't change. People die, said Lola. She died with a knife in her back. It's a big bad world, said Lola. You knew her, said Nick. Maybe, I know. Yes, you know a lot of people. Well, what about him? Nick pointed to the fat man in the other photo. Look, mister, I don't know what you want. Who's the fat man? Just tell me that. Lola took her long cigarette holder from her bright red lips. Her face was serious. You're a nice guy, she said. You don't want to know a man like that. Stay away from him. What's his name? Everyone calls him Rico, she said. What does he do? I don't know, this and that. Buying, selling, that kind of thing. Lola knew a lot more, Nick thought. But she didn't want to tell him. She's scared, like the editor. There's someone big, someone important, behind all this. Suddenly the phone rang. Lola answered it. Hello, not now. No, not here, I can't. Okay, where are you? I'll be there in ten minutes. Lola went to the door. I'm going. You stay here in the club. Have a good time. Don't think about men like Rico. Nick stopped her. Before you go, he said, tell me one thing. Who do you think killed Anne Hammond? Men. Lola laughed. 
It's always men. It's a man's world. Men killed your darling Anne. Chapter 5, Thursday, 1.15 a.m. Lola left the club. Nick waited at the bar for a minute or two. Then he followed Lola outside. He saw her car disappear fast down the empty street. I know where she's going, he thought suddenly. It wasn't easy to follow her. Nick didn't want Lola to see his car, but soon they were near the place. Yes, I was right, said Nick to himself. They were near the house where the party was, where Anne's body was found. He parked his car and walked to the house. Lola's car was outside. Nick waited around the corner from the main door. After a few minutes, Lola came out with two men. Round the back, said one of the men, while I put these in the car. The men took boxes from the house. One man put them in Lola's car while she came towards Nick with the other man. Nick moved fast. He went around the back of the building and found an open space like a small garden. There was a fire burning there and another man was there. A fat man. Was it Rico? Lola and the other man were coming closer behind Nick. The fat man was in front of him. Nick moved quickly behind the garden wall. Where have you been? The fat man shouted. Nick stopped still. Then Lola spoke. This journalist guy came to the club, she said. He had a photo of Anne. Put that on the fire, said the fat man. Nick looked over the wall. The other man was putting lots of papers, letters, addresses, documents on the fire. And he knew about Blade, said Lola. The second man arrived carrying two boxes. Lola took one and started putting it on the fire. Don't put that on the fire, said the fat man. The other man dropped the box he was carrying. A bag of white powder fell out and burst open on the ground. You fool. Sorry, Rico, it was an accident, said the man. He got down on his knees to try and pick the powder up. Rico, thought Nick. So it is him. The man called Rico was speaking again. Find Blade Reigns before that journalist guy finds him, he said. Burn all the evidence and get the snow away from here. Snow, the gangster's name for cocaine, Nick thought. That's the big story. Just then he heard another car arrive. A tall, thin man got out of the car. He was very angry. But it was his uniform that Nick noticed with surprise. He recognized the man. This was someone important the chief of Los Angeles police. You are nothing but a stupid fat fool, shouted the police chief. Nick heard the sound of a hand hitting someone. Don't hit me, cried Rico. The chief hit him again. My men were in this house investigating that woman's murder. With all this stuff in the house, the snow, the lists of names, everything. Another hitting sound, and the police chief went on. Can you imagine? A police chief who tells his men to leave the place, not to investigate? Can you believe that? You make me look a fool. I'm sorry, boss, cried Rico. Just don't hit me anymore. Get away from here, Lola, the chief said. Take all the stuff and get out. Lola left without saying a word. Now, you fat idiot. What happened last night? Who killed this woman, Anne Hammond? I don't know, boss, Rico replied. We had a party here. We often have parties here. Anne was talking to Blade Rains. He was waiting for Dr. Mansfield. When Blade got his stuff, he left the party. Anne went with him. So when did she come back? How did she get in? The chief asked. He was still angry. I was at Lola's before the party. Anne was there, Rico explained. She wanted to come here early, so I gave her my key to the house. 
I forgot to ask her for the key later on. Fool. So she came back, Rico continued. After the party? And met someone. And that's who killed her, I think. You think, said the chief. You never thought in your life. The chief was quiet for a minute. He looked into the fire. Blade knows too much about everything, and he'll talk. Rico, stop him talking, now, for keeps. Okay, boss, said Rico, but there's another thing. What? A reporter. He's okay, I called his editor, said the chief. I scared him. But he went to Lola's tonight, said Rico, asking all sorts of questions. About Anne, about Blade. The chief went quiet. Right, he said. Stop him talking, too. For keeps a... Chapter 6, Thursday, 8.00 a.m. Nick slept in his car that night. It was too dangerous to go home. He thought about all the problems of the case. Why did Anne and Blade Rains leave together? Was it a drugs connection? Who met Anne after the party? Blade again? Was he the killer? And who was Doctor? What was his name? Mansfield? All these questions went round and round in Nick's mind. Finally, cold and tired, he went to sleep. In the morning, Nick decided to find Blade Rains. He called someone at the newspaper office to get the actor's address. Actors always like interviews. Nick telephoned. Hello, is that Blade Rains? I'm Nick Mason from the Herald. I want to interview you, Mr. Rains. Today, if possible. Blade said, One moment. Nick heard another voice. There was someone with the actor. Then Blade Rains spoke again. That's perfect, yes. Be here in half an hour. Nick thought it was strange. Why did he say that's perfect? Who was with him? Is it a trap? Nick asked himself. When he arrived at Blade's apartment, the actor was waiting at the door. It's good of you to come, he said. Welcome to my little home. Nick followed him in. It was not a little home. It was quite luxurious and there were photos of Blade Reigns everywhere. Nick knew that Blade was not a very good actor, so he did not believe the warm welcome. Was there someone else in the apartment? I want to talk to you about Anne Hammond, Nick began. Ah, yes, said Blade. Poor bracelets. Why do you call her bracelets? She wore bracelets all the time. To cover the scars on her wrists, you know. She was a lovely person, said Blade. Do you smoke? He offered Nick a cigarette. Nick fell into the trap. As he took the cigarette, there was a terrible pain in the back of his head. He stood still for a second. Then he saw nothing but darkness. Darkness and pain. Pain and darkness. If I feel pain, I'm not dead, thought Nick. His head felt terrible, but he was alive. Very slowly, Nick opened his eyes. He was in Blade's apartment, and there was a gun in his hand. A gun, he thought. He closed his eyes again. When he opened his eyes again, the pain was still there, and the gun was still there. He moved his head slowly. Then he saw Blade Reigns. Blade was on the floor, dead, shot in the chest, and Nick had the gun in his hand. Suddenly he saw the trap. Now Nick was a wanted man, wanted for the murder of Blade Rains. The chief of police wanted to stop Blade Rains and Nick talking, for keeps. This was his way of doing it, a very clever way. Nick stood up quickly. Get out of here. Take the gun, he said to himself, but not the main door, the back way. He went onto the balcony and saw a fire escape. 
He heard the sound of police cars arriving and ran down the fire escape. I'm a wanted man. The police know my car. Where can I go? He walked away from the fire escape into the crowds of people walking to work. Alone in the crowd, Nick had nowhere to go. Chapter 7, Thursday 9.00 p.m. Twelve hours later, Lola arrived at the club. When she went into her office, someone was already there. She stopped in surprise. Then she smiled. What are you doing here? She asked. I had nowhere to go, said Nick. So I came here. It was easy to break the window and come in. He smiled. Sorry about the window. I also used your phone. No problem, said Lola. But why here? Blade is dead, Nick told her. I know all about Rico and about the police chief. They killed him, but they put the gun that killed him in my hand. You can imagine what the police chief will do if he finds me. Blade, too. Dead, Lola whispered. First Anne, now Blade. Why, oh why? It's all one big organization, and they will kill anybody to save themselves. They'll kill me, and you too now if they find us, Nick said. So they killed Anne, Lola said. I don't know, said Nick. There's one man I want to find, then I'll know. Please, Nick, Lola said and came towards him. Be careful. You're the only one I can trust now. She touched him. He turned to her. They moved slowly together and kissed. Nick wanted the kiss to go on forever, but Lola stopped it. You loved her. Anne, she said. It was a sort of love, he said. The memory was like pain, a pain that never goes away. Flashback. March 1935, five years ago, Nick's memories of Anne were always of pain. She always drank too much, she cried. She shouted. I can't live with her, he said the last time. I can't live without her. He went into the bedroom. She was crying again. All I want, Anne said to him, is someone to love me. You don't love me, Nick. Not really. You don't want what I want. Her voice was strange, quiet. There was no hope in it. Stop drinking whiskey, Anne. Then you'll feel better, he said. See a doctor. He'll help you. I don't want to see a doctor. I just want you. I want you to say you love me. That's all. But you will not say it. She was crying again. Nick thought for a moment. The answer was no. He didn't really love Anne. This was the end. He stood up and went to the door. Anne came after him. Please don't go. Don't leave me. She fell to his knees and tried to stop him leaving. If you leave me, I'll kill myself. I can't go on without you. Nick stood at the door and looked down at her. He didn't know what to say or what to do. Will she try to kill herself again? He thought. Like before. He saw the scars on her wrist. I'm going, Anne, he said. It was the last time he saw her alive. Who is Dr. Macefield? Nick asked Lola. Mansfield is his name, she said. He gives Blade Reigns the stuff. Stuff? Cocaine? I don't know, Lola said. Stuff. Do you know where he lives? It's in the book on my desk, Lola told him. Nick found the address. It was out of town, on the sea, at Zuma Beach. It was a place Nick knew. He and Anne went there a lot five years ago. Wait here, I need your car, he said to Lola. But don't tell anyone where I'm going. I'll wait, Nick, Lola said. I'll wait as long as you want me to. Chapter 8, Thursday, 10.30 p.m. 
Nick took Lola's car to drive to Zuma Beach. He drove fast. He was angry now, angry for Anne. He wanted to kill someone, to have justice for Anne. But killing someone was not the way to do it. When he arrived at Zuma Beach, Nick parked the car and walked down to the sea. He remembered walking here with Anne. Then he thought of his plan. He took some seawater and splashed it on his hair, his face, and his shirt. He was now all wet and cold. He went up to Dr. Mansfield's big house and rang the bell. He started to shake and tremble. But it was not fear. It was all part of the plan. A thin old man came to the door. Nick remembered the lawyer's story about the men at the party. A fat man, a thin man, an old man, and a very good-looking man. Well, the fat man was Rico, the thin man was the police chief, and the good-looking man was Blade Rains. Was this the fourth man? Nick was shaking all over. He kept to his plan. Dr. Mansfield? He asked in a weak voice. Yes, said the old man. What do you want at this time of night? I need help. I need some stuff. Nick kept on. Doctor, please, it's two days. I'm going to die. And he fell down at the doctor's feet. The doctor quickly took Nick inside. The house was large and very luxurious. The doctor was a rich man, and Nick knew how he made his money. He sold drugs to people. People like Blade Rains and Rico. The doctor helped Nick into his study. How did you know to come to me? He asked. Who told you about me? Blade, said Nick, still in a weak voice. He said to come to you. It's very dangerous, Dr. Mansfield said. Blade's a fool. Was doctor, said Nick in his real voice. Blade was a fool. Now he is dead. And Anne Hammond, she's dead too. You knew her too. Who are you? cried the doctor. With a quick movement, he opened his desk and started to pull out a gun. But Nick was even quicker. He took the doctor's arm and pushed the gun out of his hand. The old man tried to fight, but Nick was much younger and stronger. He lifted the doctor up by his jacket. He pushed him to the wall and threw him against it. The doctor fell to the floor. I spoke to the police today, doctor, Nick said. Not to your friend, the chief, but to my friend in the police, Jack. The doctor looked up at Nick. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. I think you do, doctor, Nick went on. I told Jack who killed Blade Rains. It wasn't me, it was Rico. Then Jack told me about Anne. The results of the laboratory tests showed she was a drug addict. Someone gave her those drugs. I think it was you. The doctor said nothing. Start talking, doctor, before I call the police. The doctor began to tell Nick the story. Anne worked at Lola's club. Rico was the real boss. Just the name was Lola's. The doctor sold drugs to Rico, so sometimes the doctor went to the club. It was a safe place to go because the chief of police was part of the organization. The doctor knew Anne, a beautiful woman, but sad. He spoke to her on the night of the party, Tuesday night, just two days ago. She asked for help. She said she needed a doctor. She was a drug addict. She said Rico sold her the stuff. The doctor agreed to meet her after the party. I wanted to help her, he said. I felt sorry for her. When they met later, it was about three o'clock in the morning. The doctor saw that it was a trap. Anne didn't want help. She wanted more drugs. But the doctor didn't have any drugs with him. He only wanted to help her. This made Anne very angry. She pulled out a knife. She came at the doctor with the knife. The doctor tried to stop her. 
He took her arm and turned her round until the knife fell from her hand. Then he took the knife and tried to calm her, but she was still angry and violent. Suddenly, in the confusion, they fell. Anne screamed. Then she was still. The doctor still had the knife in his hand, and it was in her back. She died in his arms. The doctor was now in tears. I wanted to help her, he said to Nick. I didn't want her to die. Nick phoned the police. Jack, it's Nick, he said. I'm at Zuma Beach with an old man, and I know the truth about Anne Hammond. Chapter 9, Friday 1.00 AM Why do I feel so bad? Nick was drinking scotch whiskey. I found the killer. Rico and the police chief are in jail. I saved you. Yes, you saved me, said Lola. Justice for Anne. That's what I wanted, he said. Lola touched his hand. Like I told you, it's a big bad world. There's not much justice in it. Anne was so lonely, so lost, Nick went on. Stop drinking, Nick. It doesn't help. Until yesterday, I was a good reporter. But this is a story I just don't want to write. It's too near to me. Now I'm just another drunk man in Lola's club. No, you are not. Stop feeling sorry for yourself, Lola told him. I'm going to tell you a secret, Nick said slowly. I killed Anne Hammond. What? Lola cried. We lived together. Six years ago, he said. I thought so, said Lola. And I left her. I just walked out and left her. That started her on the long road to her death. Lola took Nick's hand. Look, Nick, she said. Everybody dies one day. She tried to kill herself, Nick went on. All those scars, those bracelets, because of me. The doctor put a knife in her back. But Lola, I put a knife in her heart. Glossary Chapter 1 Defend to say that someone is good or right. Detective E.S. A policeman whose job is to investigate crime. Familiar. Someone you know well or recognize easily. Scars. A line on the skin where there has been a cut. Wig. Hair that is not real. Wrist. The part of the body where the hand joins the arm. Chapter 2. Apartment. American English for a flat. A home on one floor, arrest, ed. To take to the police station, editor, newspaper boss, innocent. Did not commit the crime victim, person who was murdered. Chapter 4, Gangster. Someone who belongs to a group of criminals, serious. Not smiling. Chapter 5, Burst. To break open so that what is inside falls out, document as. A paper that gives information for keeps, for always, uniform. The same clothes worn by a group. Chapter 6. Bracelets. A pretty band or chain you wear on your wrist. Luxurious. Extremely comfortable. Chapter 7. A pretty band or chain you wear on your wrist. Extremely comfortable. Save. To protect from danger. Trust. To believe that someone is good and wants to help you. Chapter 8. Confusion. Disorder. They did not know what was happening. Tremble. When your body shakes with fear or cold, 